the men and the beauties I step on the grateful heights Still sober enough for my duties I brought her a full of thanks If it were later, the will be stronger My much might last rather longer <laughs> I propose a toast to the parent And for his health Let's go! ambassador of than Pantavedro. <laughs> of course, if they offered me France, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> well, at least France isn't on the verge of bankruptcy. We are not bankrupt, my dear Monsieur Saint-Brioche. Mm. Just facing a small recession mm. and a few rolling blackouts. <laughs> now I would like to read you the message which I have sent to His Highness for this occasion. <laughs> message. Message. <laughs> Where is my secretary? <laughs> Tonight, on the eve of that sublime anniversary, your highness's birthday, all your devoted subjects here in the far west are met together with joyful thoughts, united to pledge our love and loyalty. Bravo, bravo. That was brilliant. They are all so moved. They need time to be alone and reflect. Yegush, have you seen Prince Stanilo? No. Then go and find him. I need him here before Madame Glavary arrives. Your wish is that Prince Stanilo. Olga? Yes? Pardon me, Monsieur. I want to thank you very much. <coughs> Are you flirting with Monsieur Sombrioche? Of course not. It was he who was flirting with me. Oh. Well, that is all right. <laughs> Wait. That is not all right. That is not all right at all. Look at poor Kromov. He's so jealous. Poor Kromov. Suspicion eats away at his heart. Poor Kromov. You think he had learned from the great man with whom he associates? Who? Me, of course. I who has given him a shining example of conjugal fidelity, trust, and enduring security. Look, there she is, sitting next to Monsieur de Rossignon. <gasps> Poor baby. She must be tired. She has been shopping all day. Isn't your excellency even a little jealous? Of her shopping? Not at all. I hate shopping. But she speaks so charmingly to Monsieur de Rossignon. My wife is a shining example of wifely virtue. She's charming to everyone, for my sake. Of course she is, Your Excellency. Look now for a chance. There's no one here. Oh, at last, and heaven is here. I must have a word with you quickly. Words are few that I long to whisper. Oh, no. A word of folly and a word you know. Surely your heart can 
guess what I say. The song my dreams are singing night and day. Oh, Doris, friend, such dreams are forbidden. Be strong and forget them. Forget them. I soon get you married. I'd rather die. You are my own. I want only you. And you are... I beg you, refrain, and mind you never say such things again. A highly respectable wife with no matrimonial strife in future political choices receive with a Dearest darling, I must tell you something. And I must tell you something. Be quiet. I don't want to hear it. Well, it's not fair that you get to speak and I don't. I only need to say it once more. I... Oh, my dearest darling, stop torturing yourself. We must make an end of this. An end? C'est fini. A bientôt. Arrivederci. Auf Wiedersehen. Ciao, bambino. I intend to find you a wife. <laughs> a wife? For me? Why, that's impossible. I love only you. Oh, please be quiet. You know I don't want to hear this. I'm a respectable wife, a shining example of conjugal fidelity, trust, and, 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 and enduring security. <laughs> it sounds like you're running a mutual fund. <laughs> oh, 
Valenciennes. You make me so happy, I want to climb the Eiffel Tower and scream it to all of Paris. Oh, I don't think that's necessary. I'm the only one who needs to know. Well, it, at least give me your fan. Why? It's not hot in here. <gasps> what are you doing? I'm going to write you. You need not write. I'm standing here in front of you. But since you forbid me to say it, I will write it down instead. <laughs> From my heart to yours. I love you. Oh. <gasps> oh! How dare you! You see, she puts up with his distasteful company because she loves me. Valenciennes. Yes, my darling. I was just talking to Monsieur de Rossillon about you. <laughs> you see, I told you. Dearest, do you know if Madame Glavary has arrived yet? No, I don't, but I will go and see. <laughs> <laughs> well, Monsieur de Rossillon, are you abandoning me? I, but yes, no, well, this. <laughs> Come <laughs> along. I must tell her there are other men she could entertain for me. Why must she always be with him? Because, because she loves, loves you. Of course. Oh, for such a wise man, I can be so foolish every now and then. <laughs> Never, <laughs> Your Excellency. But my husband. Al infierno con your husband. Your husband is always coming between us. <gasps> now is not a good time. My husband. Al enfer avec your husband. Why must you always mention he? I wonder what is keeping Madame Glavary. Who is this Madame Glavary? Yes, what is so interesting about her? Well, there is nothing interesting about her. Nothing except her 50 million, of course. <laughs> 50 million? Charmant. 50 million? Caramba! How extraordinarily attractive she must be. Where does she come from? She was the daughter of a poor farmer in Ponte Vedro. When she was young, the old court banker Count Glavary proposed to her. At first she refused him because it was well known that she and Prince Danilo were madly in love with each other. But Danilo's uncle, the well-bred aristocrat, forbade his nephew's marriage to a lowly farm girl and it made it impossible for them to even see each other. So, Madame Glavary accepted to make his proposal. He was so considerate. He died a short time after, leaving her the wealthiest to be the in Europe. <laughs> Fifty million. Vive l'amour. Que mujer encantadora. I wonder if she's arrived yet. I'll go see. What have I done? They must be stopped. This is a serious case. The 50 million of Madame Glavary are deposited in the National Bank of Pontevedro. At last count, the Bank of Pontevedro had 50 million, 1175 francs and 80 centimes. The 50 million belong to Madame Glavary. The 1100 francs are mine. The 75 francs are mine. And the 80 centimes belong to the rest of the population. <laughs> so, if Madame Glavary... Here is a foreigner... Who withdraws her money from our bank... The economy will crash! A national nightmare! Disaster! This is disaster! Bankruptcy! <laughs> And our beloved country does not even have sufficient importance in Europe to go bankrupt with honor, not to mention the tourist trade. So, we understand. En garde! En garde! Yeah. Madame, Madame Glavary has arrived! It's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. You are the star. 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 You are the star.
Delicieuse, ravissante. Oh, madame, that's a beautiful voice. The timbre is. Metallic. Metallic, what? oh, madame. Uh, metallic, as in the sound of coin. Oh, 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 oh that's oh, 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 Gentlemen, I've only been in Paris a few days and have not yet learned how to hide my true feelings. Oh. <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me. Only if you grant me the first dance. And only if you grant me the one immediately afterwards. Gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, here, write all your names down on my dance card. <laughs> Madame, it's easier to break through enemy lines than get close to you. Baron Cinta. What a pleasure to see you again. <laughs> Madame Glavary, it's a greatest honor to me that you have graced our celebration. Allow me to, uh, to introduce my wife, uh, Valenciennes. Madame, I'm happy to welcome you to the Pontevedrian Embassy. You are our greatest national treasure. Ooh. Please tell me, Madame, uh, what are the other Pontevedrian national treasures? Oh, um, the mountains, mm. the lakes, mm. And the, um, and the cabbage strudel, of course. Oh, yes. I forgot about the cabbage strudel. She's the one you shall marry. But she's the one I want for you. We must make it so. Madame, may I present the Count Camille de Rossillon? He begs for your dance card. Any friend of yours is certainly a friend of mine. Oh, however, I only have the intermission free. If you would have me, madame, it would fulfill my deepest desire to accompany you during the intermission. <laughs> Monsieur de Rossillon, how fortunate you can fulfill your deepest desire in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I can, if I am with you, madame. I forbid you to sit out the intermission with her. Are you trying to break my heart? But I thought you said... Why do you insist on listening to me? Listen, everyone, because you've been so generous in throwing me this party, I'd like to invite all of you to my house tomorrow. Oh. I'm throwing a Pontevedrian party for all my Parisian friends. Oh. And then I'll have time to dance with each and every one of you. Oh. Offer her your arm. But I, thought... I told you not to listen to me. Now go on. Madame, may I? Not like that. <laughs> Gentlemen. I choose the arm of our dear Baron. He's the least dangerous. <laughs> Thank you, madame. You can trust me. I'm absolutely harmless. <laughs> she look at me. At me, too. She smiled at me. At me, too. <laughs> I will marry her. Me, too. You must marry her, Camille. But you don't want me to even spend the intermission with That's her. That's irrelevant. If you marry the widow, you will be rich for the rest of your life. And I remain a respectable wife. Now I see what you mean. 
I will marry her. She's a handsome woman. Perhaps I can grow to love her. How many times do I have to tell you not to listen to me? The Fatherland asks for Count Daniel. Here he is. Where the hell is the Fatherland? Hello! Fatherland, whatever will you understand? I sweat for you with all my might, but another more my day than the night. I'm sitting at my desk by one, among the urchin files galore. A little furtive drinking ton, a bag at home for drinks and more. A private interview's imposed, the witty statesman in his chair. But keep my mouth severely closed with diplomatic sound affair. I play my part without a doubt, with the very salts are somewhat thin. I use my ink tray as an out, and by some verse are out and in. The strain of it is great indeed, until the day I see the light. The wonder that I saw. of seen at night. I'm off to Shemaxine to join the whirling stream for one brief hour of and a moment's climb romancing. Lollo, doodoo, shoo-shoo, kilo-kilo, marigo, fru-fru. And when it comes to dancing, goodbye, my fatherland. The Maxims once again, we all are much of pain. I lay behind ways to some lovely, willing faces. of all Maxims, the only diplomat who can ride a horse backwards is here. Can you repeat that? <laughs> With all due respect, I can't repeat anything. I must lie down. With all due respect, you caught me at the end of a very, very long and arduous night. I must take a refreshing nap. Oh, with all the respect, sleep here. Here's a, let me escort you. <laughs> Dear girl, hmm? I forgot your name. Is it Lolo Dodo Juju? Has anyone told you you have the most beautiful eyes and lips? Do you want to join me for a snooze? <laughs> you really do need to sleep. <laughs> yes, yes, that was what I was just telling Louis Napoleon. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. What's wrong with your hand, my dear? It's so rough. <laughs> Count Danilo, it's me, Yegush. Yegush, <laughs> go away. I don't want to have nightmares. I want to dream about my beautiful reset. <laughs> no, no, please. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Oh, Let me rest a while. Oh, go and dance with some of the other ladies. <laughs> no, no, I insist. Finally alone. I must sit down. Someone snoring. Sir, the train has arrived. Here's Paris. Last stop, Paris. Tiny oh, What kind of a party is this if a man can't sleep through it? Anna. <gasps> Anna. Is that really you, or am I still dreaming? 
In your case, does it matter if you're awake or asleep? Uh, it is you. I'd recognize that warm greeting anywhere. And I'd recognize that snoring anywhere, even in Paris. <laughs> Rumor has it that you're living here now. Oh, yes. I'm a Parisian in my soul. I want to catch up on everything I missed in my youth. And now that I'm mature enough to appreciate the finer things in life, I intend to fall in love and remarry. I'm a Pontevedran in my soul, and I am mature enough to stay single and have a very nice time. There's nothing wrong with marriage, Danilo. Especially when your late husband leaves you 40 million. 50 million. You know that if I had married you, the only thing I could have left you would be a cabbage, but a great deal of love. Oh, you'd never have married me. Don't you remember? Your old uncle wouldn't allow you to bestow your white-gloved, aristocratic hand on a penniless commoner such as myself. Uh, you'll be very glad to know that I've taken my revenge on him. Ever since he wouldn't let me marry you, I squandered the family fortune and sabotaged my once so promising political career. You did all that because you loved me? I did all that because I hated him. You, madame, weren't exactly heartbroken when I left. How long did you wait before marrying your elderly bank? A week? A month? I had to survive. I couldn't rely on my aristocratic breeding and, after all, I am a woman, mm. and I had no other options. But now you do. Oh, yes. Now all the cards are in my hands. That must be so exhausting. I'm so sorry you have to live like that. Yes. It's so difficult to know who to trust. Oh. All men are the same. <laughs> if one of them says to me, I love you, I know it's not me he wants. It's my bank account. Nonsense. I'll prove it. Proceed. The girl that's arm and eyes. I read. That queen, the beauty bride. The beautiful thing relies on charms on awesome mood. I should I. One as plain as sea. Not I. Between your fortress tweed. I try. to all men where there's good. Beyond the Andes in May.
At least, Hannah, I never wanted you for your money. But now, you're unfortunately rich, and I am very, very tired. Ooh, were you out on the town tonight, Danny Law? <laughs> oh, no. I was at the Académie Française, translating Molière into Pontevedrian. <laughs> you always knew how to have a good time. Yes, my head hurts. Molière can do that to a man. I don't think it's Molière, Anna. It's running into you here. <laughs> Aren't you happy to see me, Danilo? I'll never say I'm not happy to see you. For old time's sake? For old time's sake? That's very romantic, coming from a confirmed bachelor. Oh, please don't stop there. Please continue. Tonight I've heard a hundred men telling me they love me. <laughs> Hearing it from you will give me the biggest laugh yet. That is one laugh, madame, you will never have. Never? Never. That's absolutely... Absolutely. Prince Daddy Long. Ah, a declaration of war. <sighs> no. see your fan anywhere. When was the last time you had it? I remember having it when I was talking to Olga, you know, Kramov's wife. Oh, I told you, you should have never written on it. You also told me not to listen to you. Oh, don't worry, my darling, you'll find it. Perhaps you left it in the ballroom while you were speaking to Madame Stromov. Oh, my God, you wrote, I love you on it. If they find it, I'm lost. I'm, who am such a respectable wife. Why do you keep saying that? For fear of forgetting it. Now, please, go and look for it. Hurry, please, you must find it. Ah, madame, I must talk to you. I have just discovered something horrible. What? Where is your husband, the ambassador? What's the matter, Cromwell? Yes, what's the matter, Cromwell? Oh, my friends, my dear friends, I have some news that will upset you. That will shock you. Something truly devastating has just happened. What, what is, is it? it? My wife is having an affair. <laughs> yes, of course. But what is a horrible thing you must tell us? Yes, don't keep us in suspense. What? I just told you. My Olga is having an affair with another man. Oh, I, I mean, uh, I, I just can't believe it. You're Olga. Poor Robert. I have proof. What proof? This fan! Oh, oh my God! Um, where did you find that fan? I found it in the ballroom. Look what is written on it! I love you. And you're sure this is your wife's fan? Absolutely! I found it right next to where she was sitting! How good she! How good she! Good she! Good she! <laughs> Relax! This is not your wife's. It belongs to my wife. Mine? Agree with me, otherwise he'll kill his wife. It's your national duty. Oh. <clears throat> ah, yes. Now I recognize it. Mm -hmm. It is mine. Oh, wonderful. Perfect. Bravo. But who dare to write that he loves you on it? Yes, who? Um, really, Kromov? Who else but my dear husband? My sweet darling husband. Yes, who else but her sweet darling husband? Oh. Who else? Wonderful! I must run to my Olga. I must beg her forgiveness. Oh, my poor Olga. My poor little Olga. Olga! Olga! And now I will return that fan. No, 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 no. Let me return this to Madame Kromov. I will have a few well-chosen words with her. Oh, but, my dear, I could choose those words just as well. Ah, there is Danilo at last. Now I must talk to him privately. 
Run along, my dear. See to our guests, Monsieur de Rossillon. We'll gladly help you, I'm sure. <laughs> but I'm suddenly very warm. Um, perhaps I could borrow Madame Promoff's fan? Run along. <laughs> uh, uh, Madame? <laughs> that fan will be the end of me. Your Excellency, at last, Count Danilo. You're here. Uh, in body, if not in mind, Your Excellency. I have a diplomatic mission of the greatest importance to discuss with you. Are we invading Luxembourg again? No. No! This mission can save the Fatherland from our impending financial doom. It's a matter of national security. We are bankrupt. You must marry into money. There is 50 million sitting in our own backyard. You can't mean Madame Glavary. You loved her once. Why can't you love her again? Your Excellency, never! I love my country, but loving her is out of the question. If Madame Glava remarries a foreigner, our fatherland will be out 50 million and it will be your fault! Mm. <laughs> your Excellency, for the sake of our beloved country, I'll thwart every non pontevedrian who approaches Madame Glavary, but I will not marry her! Why not? Because of my principles! What principles? Make love often, get engaged seldom, and never ever marry, especially a rich woman. But you pledge to halt the foreign invasion of would be suitors? I am at the front lines, Your Excellency. Thank you, Prince. At this moment, I am body the fatherland, its shining valleys, its majestic rivers, its unscalable peaks, its pestilential swamps. It's deplorable administration, it's a roaring trade deficit, and it's heavy taxes. It is all here. It is this fatherland that speaks through my voice and tells you, Prince Danilo, come and kiss me. The fatherland is getting me wet. <laughs> And 
Madame, how can we thank you enough? There is no better party in Paris than a Pontevedrian party. Whatever they do at Maxine's, there's nothing compared to what we can do. <laughs> Your celebration in honor of Pontevedro could hardly be more, uh, more, uh, more Pontevedrian. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellency. Now, everyone, the buffet is waiting for you in the dining room. Oh. Caviar, champagne, and the pièce de résistance, cabbage strudel. <laughs> Are all the gentlemen of the embassy here? Yes, we are all here, madame. All? Uh, except Prince Danilo. I see. What? The prince is not here. He promised me. <laughs> Please excuse me. I must join my guests. Why isn't that good for nothing here? He's not coming at all. As far as he's concerned, the party can go to blazes. He said, impossible. No, it is entirely possible and true. Your Excellency, here I am. Oh. <laughs> I guess he changed his mind. Prince Danilo, if I did not meet you, I would say you are a spoiled good for nothing. Your Excellency, but since I do need you, I will tell you that you are a charming, delightful, distinguished young man. <laughs> My wife informed me that Monsieur de Rossillon intends on marrying Madame Glavary. Camille? That little wisp of a man, he's worse than that. He's also half French and half Luxembourgian. <laughs> he's getting in the way of my entire plan. We must discover a weakness and use it to torture him. Uh, with all due respect, Your Excellency, I happen to know of a very vulnerable spot. <laughs> Monsieur de Rossillon is in love. With whom? Oh. Uh, with a woman. <laughs> well, that narrows it down. <laughs> Uh, with all due respect, Your Excellency, it is a married woman. Oh, I'm shocked. I can't tolerate indiscretion. But how can we discover the identity of that married harlot? Uh, uh, that I can't say. Wait. What? I have an idea. Do you recognize this handwriting? Yes. Oh, this is Camille's handwriting. Oh, what luck! Who does this fan belong to? Olga Kromov. Her husband found it last night, but I convinced him that it was my wife's. There must have been a mistake. Madame Kromov uh, dropped her fan last night, and I picked it up for her. I'm sure that this is a different fan. It must belong to someone else. Uh, don't worry, gentlemen. I'll discover the true identity of this fan's owner. I will leave this mission in your capable, well manicured hands. Prince Danilo, don't fail the fatherland. We'll rendezvous in front of this pavilion at 20 hundred hours for ultimate security to review the situation. Gentlemen, I'll see you at Project Pavilion. <laughs> Coming, Mr. Nieguch. Now think, Danilo, think. Who could this fan belong to? I can't imagine that Camille is carrying on with Olga Kromov and... Prince Danilo. I thought you weren't coming. You are avoiding me. I am not avoiding you, madame. I have an appointment. Oh, really? Here? Uh, I am a diplomat. I have appointments everywhere. <laughs> Secret missions, counterintelligences. What an impressive uniform. Are all those medals yours? Where did you win these decorations? Was it in the Battle of the Boudoirs? <laughs> Madame must certainly remember that I performed my military duties undercover. <laughs> Never mind. You always look so dashing riding your horse in the parades across town. But every time an actual battle took place, you were found riding in the other direction. I couldn't help it. I always ended up with horses with no sense of direction. <laughs> You made one silly cavalier. <laughs> Oh, 
he smiles and wings his heart, though the very soon must part. Charming and take that look of your face. Someone is coming. The state of the fatherland is in your hands. Mine? I just had a manicure. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, do you have a pencil? Uh, yes, sir. Stand back, observe, and take note. Yes, sir. <laughs> Madame Krumov. Uh, Prince Danilo. Have you lost or misplaced anything recently? Why, no. Do you think it is that I'm lost? Well, something that one loses very easily. Your heart, perhaps. Oh, but Don't I... be alarmed. There's nothing surprising in that. I can see how the I can see how the gentleman could not resist your exciting body, your beautiful face, and your irresistible mouth. Uh, no, 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 it isn't true. <laughs> Who told you? You just did. Oh, my God! Uh, don't worry. You can depend on my discretion. But may I take the liberty of giving you a warning? He is on the point of marrying someone else. Not just anyone else, but I'm Glavary, in fact. What? Saint Brioche is going to marry Madame Glavary? Saint Brioche? Yes. But who told you? You just did, Madame. Uh, Only you. Uh, 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 well, I assure you, I... I couldn't care less. The last thing I'm going to do is find him right now and give him a piece of my mind. The rat! <laughs> it wasn't her fan after all. Negus, write down Olga Kromov Olga. and Sam Brioche. Sam Brioche. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, here comes Madame Bogdanovich. Let's see if the fan is hers. Madame Bogdanovich. Yes, Prince Danilo? Let me first uh, compliment you um, uh, yeah, on the way you're dressed. <laughs> it is so uh, dressy. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. Have you lost anything recently? <gasps> Perhaps your 
heart. Or perhaps something you use to make you cooler when you're steamy and hot. Steamy and hot. <gasps> oh my god, you know everything! <laughs> Set your mind at rest. You can trust me. But let me give you a bit of advice. Drink a glass of cold water. He's on the point of marrying Madame Glavary. Kafka is about to marry the 50 million? Kafka da! Oh, Prince Danilo, thank you so much for telling me in advance. I am forever in your debt. Where is he? Where is he, the monster? That Spanish seducer? Wait till I get my hands on his armada! Who does this confounded fan belong to? Senor, everything in your attitude indicates that you don't know who I am. Really? I am Senor Cascade y Cascadico. Pithico, to the to my grande. Oh, le. You, suburban diplomat, don't impress me. Besides, I think you're a fake, an imposter, and an idiot. This is working with the both of them. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, enough, please. You're both going to need all your strength tonight. A scandal may explode at any moment. Why would that be? Our charming hostess, whom you've been courting so passionately, has learned of you little, how shall I put it, romantic escapades, pardon, of yours, dear Saint-Brioche, with Olga Kromov. Merde! And of yours, my dear Signora Cascada, with uh, Madame Bogdanovic. Caramba! Now, to take a bit of advice from someone who only has your best interests at heart, if you want to avoid a scandal, you must avoid Madame Glavory at all costs. Merci. Gracias. <laughs> ah, gentlemen, Bogdanovich Krum of your right in time. Oh, yes. <laughs> Don't you study the what is it? We were just discussing what a husband should do if he discovers that uh, his wife is having a little, what's the right word, gentlemen? <laughs> Extra marital entanglement. Well, that is very simple. I would strangle the rascal! Strangle? Really? Yeah. I think it would be much easier to just shoot him straight through the heart. Bien! Bien! What are you gentlemen getting so worked up about? What a husband should do should his wife take a lover. <laughs> Thank God I don't have to worry about anything of that sort. <laughs> Why no women? Such a problem, who can tell? They're impossible to live with, but without them life is hell. And the action of a woman, she predicted not by man, because his one created is made from a different man. For one will thrive on words of honey, if you treat her as queen bee. The second of your for your money. When it's gone, then so is she. A king in wine wants your protection. You will never get away. Upon a beating means affection. You should beat her twice a day. The fifth may try to be a brother. Take your passion at the door. The sixth will try to be a mother. But she'll nag you even more. They'll burn in you with the relay. Underneath all those 
my husband knows that you're in love with a married woman. He's determined to find out who it is. Now, more than ever, we must not see each other. At least then, let me have something that will remind me of you forever. <gasps> Such as what? Felicien, look! Here is your friend at last. Finally. Um, pencil, please. Now, there is something to remind you of me. Take it from my heart to yours. I am a highly respectable wife. <laughs> Falacien, won't you even give me a farewell kiss? A kiss? A kiss? Are you trying to compromise me? Dear friend, because... You must torment me. Oh, no, I want to get you married. So you must speak to Anna now this evening. I understand, but it is you I long for. Oh, 
and Monsieur de Rossillon, both in the <coughs> pavillon, together in the dark. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, oh and here comes the Baron. Twenty hundred hours on the dot. Well, Yedush, is everything ready in the pavilion? Uh, ready and waiting. All right, then. Open the door. Oh, but your excellency... I said, <laughs> open the door. <laughs> Impossible! It's busy. Uh, uh, I mean to say that it is occupied. In fact, it is preoccupied with what I wouldn't dare to say. A couple. No, just two people. <laughs> ah! You seem very troubled, Mr. Niegush. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> I'm so attached to your excellency. Let go of me, you idiot. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I get it. Danilo is in there with some strumpet he met at this party. No, it's Monsieur de Rossillon. Oh. Bravo, Niegos. We've trapped the married woman, that hussy, the foolish cow. Whoever married this woman must know of her indiscretion. She must be made an example. Niegos? There is another door at the back of the pavilion. Go lock it so she can't escape. Yes, sir. Ah, Dan, you know, you're just in time. I've caught Rossillon with his lady, the hussy, the foolish cow. Oh, she sounds delightful. Too bad she's already engaged. Who is she? That's a surprise. I don't know. But we'll find out. I'll use one of my ingenious devices. I'll eavesdrop at the door. Your Excellency, that isn't done in the best diplomatic circles. Fortunately, ours isn't one of the best. <laughs> what do you see? He's turning around. <laughs> it's... it's... Ah! What, what happened? <laughs> it can't be! What? Look, look, Daniel. Look, look. What happened? Who is she? What? My wife! Ah! Disgrace and shame! A scandal! It isn't Kromov who is the stupid old ass! Your Excellency, you must be mistaken. No, no. no. But, uh, Your Excellency, at least there's some consolation. What consolation? Camille will not marry. 
Madame Glavary. Hmm? The 50 million are safe. Oh. Your Excellency, you are suffering for the fatherland. Oh, damn the fatherland! Open this door! Open it! Ha! 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 I wonder what it is they want. Ha! Ha! I know for certain what I saw. Ha! 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 Light has filled my eyes. The black is the moment in my life. But where on earth's my wife? You want me? I must be insane. It's going on what we play. Ha! 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 For I have a sacred steel. I saw a woman plainly standing there. When I was speaking through the door. Could not a sly of mass at all. What's very useful, though? Uh -oh. Gentlemen, who stands before me, declare his love. You heard him speak to me. And I could have sworn it was my faithless wife. My darling, come up your mouth, baby. Make 
Diplomacy of conjugal felicity is worth consideration for close observation. The marriage ties are obsolete, the wedding pair is incomplete, and the pattern in the twofold soon becomes a treason. Triangular adjustable, or rather the tip of bustable. To prove my point, you ought to see some. One final thing, and then no more. Take my advice, keep open door. When marriage calls, keep it turning. Then take your chance and make the most of it. This match should last at least a year. Quite well, I'm on body. You say, Madame, and she, Monsieur. Quite well, I'm on body. Deep in love, I have to see a kind of a man, Harry. But soon we'll go on to it away. Silent resentment 
which kept them so strangely apart. T'was then that I, in anger, decided to cheat and betray. She turned in revenge to a scullion and gave soul and body away. For shame, cried the prince, you have wronged me. Mistaken, unfeeling, and blind, you show by this deed you are no better than all your false feminine kind. But never imagine I'm grieving. Ha <laughs> ha! He showed not a sign. <laughs> no treachery passed by believing. These words were the princes had to not mine. It's the only that rose to its climax. Here, take it. I finished with you. And so with this blessing he left her, as I will do no. This luxury replaces my dear old home. 